guys, I'm Zoe from Zoe's Fancy Cakes and today I'm going to be showing you how to decorate a cake with chocolate bars. And we're going to make the chocolate bars ourselves and colour them up all nice pretty colours. So I've picked my colours that I'm using and I'm going to use these polycarbonate moulds which I'll put links in the description to. I'll also be using white chocolate, I'm using the Calibre one because it comes in small calettes making it easier to melt than bigger pieces. So I'm just gonna microwave it sort of 30 seconds at a time to melt it, but you don't wanna fully melt it. Ideally, I don't wanna take it to above 34 degrees Celsius. If you do overheat it a little bit, we can always add some more little callets to it. Uh, this is called the seeding method when you're tempering your chocolate and you're just gonna mix those in and they should gradually melt and they'll bring the temperature of your chocolate down again. We just definitely don't want it to be over that 34 degrees Celsius. So give them a good stir for a few minutes just to check that they're melting. If not, you can stick them in the microwave, but just for a few seconds. So I've got mine down to about 30 degrees Celsius now. Just tempering the chocolate means that it should have a nice shine and a nice snap to it when it's set. When I temper it wrong, it sometimes um, looks a bit dull and is a bit softer when you bite into it. So I've divided it into bowls. I'm gonna just whiten the chocolate a tiny bit first with some white food color. I'm using the color mills because they're an oil-based one, so they work quite well in chocolate. I'll put the links below in the description, guys. I do sell most of the products, I think, that I'm using um, in my shop, which is just it's always fancy cakes online. But the whiter you start in color, the more the colors that you actually choose, like the lavender, will show us their true color. If not, the creaminess of the chocolate will change the color slightly when you add it. I did also temper my chocolate guys in glass bowls. Now ideally you can do it in plastic bowls. Plastic bowls are better because they don't retain the heat as much as glass ones. I just didn't have any plastic ones at home to use. So I've divided them up and I'm putting my color in each one. Now if you don't work quite quick, these are gonna set before you've had a chance to use them. You can just melt them again, but just make sure you don't heat them too much. Two of those uh, colors are actually very similar, the lilac and the lavender. So I'm going to pop my chocolate into the mold. So these are the Martello molds that I'm using here. And it's up to you whether you want to fill them with something or not. So if you do want to fill them, you can put your chocolate in the mold, but don't completely fill it. So turn it upside down, uh, just knock out the excess chocolate and we'll just scrape over the top edge just to get any bits from sort of around the top edges. Just bash it a little bit to make sure there's no air bubbles as well. And I'll do the same with pinks. So we'll do half of these in like the purpley color or lilac and half in the pale pink. And then I've just got a chocolate ganache that I'm just putting in the middle of each one. Usually I would use the piping bag for this. Again, I couldn't find my piping bags. So this is just like a plastic food bag. And I've just cut a hole in one end of it. Again, just give it a bit of a bash so that we know there's no air bubbles. Also, it's gonna level it out a little bit. Now, if you don't wanna use the food colors, you can get different colored chocolates as well. So for example, the ruby chocolate is quite a nice pink anyway. You can use different shaped molds as well. So the ruby chocolate, I'm actually gonna put in a different shaped mold or I might even use the ruby chocolate to just fill the back of my other molds. So this one's the sort of more pyramid shaped one and I'm gonna try and marble my colors. So I'm gonna use a bit of what's left of all the different colors I've used in the other molds and try and marble them together a little bit and then we'll scrape all the extra off and we'll see what they come out like. So whilst my chocolate bars are set in, I'm gonna just buttercream between my layers of cake. So I've gone for fairly small layers because the chocolate, it's gonna bulk it out a lot. You can see one of them I cut oval shape. It was meant to all be rounded. I've used the same colors to color my buttercream as well that's going between the layers. And I'm only trying to take the cake to the height of the chocolate bars or roughly to the height of the chocolate bars. I don't want it to come above them. I'm just gonna scrape any extra buttercream off from around the edges probably scraped a little bit too much off there. Now I'm just going to stick it on a board just while I work with it. It's not going to stay on this Christmas board. We're going to remove it from this Christmas board a little bit later on. I'm going to do a top tier. So it's going to be two tiered. So we'll go for a green buttercream between this one, some smaller layers. These ones are about maybe three, four inches across. And I just use some metal cookie cutters for cutting these out. I'll put links to the cutters that I used for cutting out my little round discs of cake below the video. So we'll just swap back to giving our bottom layer another coat. Um, you want it fairly straight, but I'm not too worried about it being ridiculously smooth because the chocolates are gonna go over the top. And we're just gonna press those in while that buttercream's still soft. Mm -hmm. 
on the top. I'm just gonna sprinkle some different sprinkles. Now, obviously you should really do your uh, chocolate bars all the way around before putting your sprinkles on. I just got a little bit overexcited and wanted to put them on first. We'll do the same for the top tier. You'll notice my top tier has got a wooden skewer through the middle. It's just because it was really soft. I didn't give it much time in the fridge. It was sliding around. So I just put a skewer in just to hold it together. I will pull that out at the end. If you've let your buttercream firm up too much, just put a little bit more on before sticking on those chocolate bars as well. You can use a brush sort of between them to remove any buttercream that's sort of squeezed out between the chocolate bars. So once you've got your chocolate bars all the way around both levels of your cake, I'm gonna dowel the cake. So I'm just putting in some plastic rods. You can use like large straws. You can use bamboo rods. You don't have to use plastic ones. You're just gonna make sure they're cut to the same height as your cake and you're just gonna push those in that bottom tier so that it supports the weight of the top tier. Because guys, these are very heavy with all the chocolate bars. Even if it's not solid chocolate and you've got a ganache filling, it still weighs a lot. So just make sure you have doweled that cake. And of course, once you've got it together, guys, you can add your sprinkles. I would probably add your sprinkles actually at the end rather than earlier, like what I did. And if you've got spare chocolate bars left, have a bit of a play around with them so you can flick across some extra chocolate and you can always stick some sprinkles on your chocolate bars themselves as well, like so. All right, let's see what it looks like inside. Thanks for watching this guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you haven't, subscribe for more videos like this one. See you next time. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.